Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Sunday, going to be a Sunday series. It's going to be Dark vs. Beyond from GSL in the round of 8 for Season 1 of 2023. Yes, GSL replays have been released to patrons of GSL, and I am a patron, so I'm casting it. All right, so it's going to be Dark versus Beyond. Two incredible players today. Top left, it's going to be Dark. Bottom right, it's going to be Beyond here on Gresfin. Uh, good map for macro games. So again, it's the best of three, as you can see right here for your uh, Sunday series. And the music is good as always, man. Blizzard composers. Best in the business, in my professional opinion. So going ahead and doing 16, 18, 17 here from Dark. Walling off on the low ground here is Beyond. Got a barracks coming up. And another barracks. Is it going to be a two racks opening? Oh, boy. So a two racks opener from Beyond. That is very, very scary for Dark, but he doesn't know it yet. Terry. Terry the Overlord. Scout it, Terry. Terra the Overlord merch at falconpaladin.store as well as Steve the SCV merch. Steve is working diligently to complete this barracks under the allotted amount that was budgeted for and under the allotted amount of time. All right, man. So Reaper first and one gas. Is this going to be... I think this is going to be another Reaper as well. 38, 42, 46, 50. Oh, wow. So that lines up very, very nicely for Bjorn. And another Reaper. Okay. A Reaper a grouping here from Beyond. Terry is here to see it in all of its glory. All right, man. So this Reaper's name is the Grim Grilled Cheese by Waldo, a subscriber of mine. The Grim Grilled Cheese, a master of cheesy tactics, became best known for his must-try grilled cheese sandwiches, where he would toast the bread with his twin jetpacks and use a reaper grenades to melt the cheese. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that would melt the cheese as much as, like, explode it. But hey, I like it. I would give it a try, see how it is. Oh, gosh, that first reaper dying would be massive. But no, too slippery here. Beyond's reapers are slippery. And guess what? Another reaper is joining the party here momentarily. And by that, I mean... Where is it? There it is. Cool. So two reapers, which the overlord saw... This was not hidden. Trying to get some damage done on this hatchery would be super cool. Mm, I mean, you're not going to kill it by yourself, probably. Hop it up in the main base, and then juke it back down, and then back up and back down. I mean, oh my gosh, three Reapers are here. Is that it? It's a three racks. Well, three Reaper opening off of two racks. They have a little bit more HP to deal with Lings, even if they have the speed upgrade, and deal with Queens, too. Nice knock back. Both those Queens get knocked back. Sick. Sick plays. Ooh, do not get caught there. Just come down here. Just come down here. You're fine. On the other side, a second base that is under construction here from Bjorn. He's hard walled off against Ling pressure. Not going to do much against Bane Lings, but, you know, you do what you can at this stage. Trying to pick off creep tumors that might... Oh, my gosh. He picked off the creep tumor. Look at all the damage that's been done on this thing. I mean, it's not, you know, not 50% damage. Butterdome, 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 boom, boom, boom. Yeah, more barracks, uh, starport, and a factory here from Beyond. We're gonna probably see what do we think here? Hellions. I'm gonna dump this barracks on this tech lab. Start getting upgrades for the Marines. The Reapers are being incredibly annoying, but they've got a quick escape position here. Man, it'd be cool to put the Lings down here and get the Queens up this way, and then. See if we can force the Reapers down into a trap. That'd be nice. Remember when Reapers were new and cool? And like the hopping animation was the coolest thing you've ever seen in StarCraft. I remember those days, man. I was watching beta videos. I was watching battle reports of alpha gameplay for StarCraft 2 back in the day, back in 20, 2009, 2010. Ah, it was a glorious time when StarCraft was new and shiny and everybody was really hyped for it. And even people who played Brood War were giving StarCraft 2 a chance at that time. And then, I don't know, it didn't really work in Korea as much as StarCraft wanted it to, huh?
still a lot of amazing Korean players in StarCraft 2, but a lot of Brood War players stuck with Brood War. Like, the Brood War scene is still massive today. As evidenced by the fact that my Brood War channel gets, like, oh, I don't know. Five times, six times, seven times the views I get over here in StarCraft 2. Just tis the nature, man. Brood War fans are loyal. And I guess there's not as much Brood War content out there on YouTube either. Overlord down. Oh, quick Banshee out. Oh, okay. So the Tech Lab actually went on to the Starport. Look at me making assumptions. Huh. So Banshee flies past an Overlord. So there should be Spores on the way. And in fact, there are Spores. Don't take that long to build. Should be a saving grace here. Yeah, looking good. Looking good, Banshee Pilot. But Queens are pretty ready for this. I mean, losing losing one drone there is not the end of the world. And here comes Bjorn. Little Marine, you know, Reaper attack, keeping all those Reapers alive. KDA charges can kind of be the difference in a battle like this. Ooh, a little bit of a supply block there from Bjorn, but immediately rectified. Super quick. So here's the six... If you want seven-minute timing, I guess there are medevacs here. This is a really fast timing here from Bjorn, man. Let's see if Dark can handle this guy. Ooh, Overlord staying alive was really key there from Dark. He's making roaches to deal with this. Okay. I mean, at this stage of the game, roaches aren't completely outscaled. Uh, wait, hold on. Queen down, queen down, queen down, queen down, queen down. Oh my gosh. If this doesn't do anything but kill those queens, I think it was a success. But dude, the drones are no! 21 drones just went down. The queens all died. The roaches are doing their best, but the medevacs are healing, and the tank is getting big off. Big time shots off here. Um, okay. Wow. Oh, so Dark may be overdroned a little bit. He's got 45 workers now, which is exactly what Bion had. Well, Bion has 47 now, but boy. Maybe he just went a little bit too heavy on the worker count. Didn't quite have enough to hold that attack because he made too many drones. And as a result, he had to sacrifice the drones, and that totally sucks. So, Banshee continuing to fly around. It's probably in the main base. He only you know, has three kills, though. Four kills. Really good, really good Banshee control here. Like, exceptional Banshee control here from Bion. But that's why he's, you know, number one, number two, number three, top three ranked player in the world, generally. It does kind of bounce around quite a bit on Oligulac. But woof. That was some attack. So, it's 60 to 47 workers. Dark rebuilds the economy, which he lost pretty quickly, because that's what Zerg can do. Left side base coming up from Dark Hatchery doing hatchery stuff. Concussive Shell is on the way from the Terran player, and it's another move out, man. Army value is 61 to 65. So Gyun has a bigger army value, which is not really what you want to see. Oh, Banshee finally gets picked out. Total of 25 drones have died. I think three or four of those uh, did go to the Banshee. Here goes Gyun. Is he going to wait for... Nah, I can't wait for 1-1. One, one. It's not not that kind of a situation here. Dude, Roaches and Ravagers. Throw some piles. Did, I think they just killed a Marine. Okay. So they're not utterly useless here. Keep throwing them down. Might work out for you eventually here. Throw some piles again. Dodged. Dodged ably. Siege tank's getting set up. Nice throw some vial hit there. Wiping that tank out. Okay. All right, all right. So Dark's Okay. I think Dark is holding here. He's got 81 to 62 army supply right now. He's got 1-1 one, one upgrades for his Roaches and Ravagers. 1-1 one, one is done from Bion here as well, though. And Bion attacking up a ramp. Not exactly what he wants to do. If he can pick off that Spore, that'd be really nice. The spore getting shots off. There you go. On the medevac is super, super annoying stuff here. But yeah, man. 82 to 66 army supply. I think, you know, Dark's in a pretty darn happy position. It's so a handful of roaches that get split off from the main group here. They must have picked off some reinforcements. They look a little battle-worn, don't they? Certainly do. There's no, there is a third base landing from Bion, but there's nothing on the ground yet. Pathogen glands on the way here from Dark. Gotta love a good pathogen gland. Gotta love a good fungal on these groups. And where are these roaches going? They're just gonna pull back and try to defend this fourth base of Darks. So, four bases of Dark way before Bion gets up his third base. Dark probably going to expand up this way next of all. 
That would be my guess. Pathogen glands is about halfway complete. That's when you want to start your infestors so they pop with that extra energy. And they can pop with the fungal available. Which they turned into a projectile and turned into a slow. It used to root and it used to be instantaneous. And let me tell you, fungal was amazing back then. Fungal was so good back then. Not even fair how good it was. Hydralisk Den, morphing in fear from dark, working on vehicle weapons is beyond. Nice pickup, boost out of there from beyond. So he's okay. This creep spread is a little bit scary. Oh, did a tumor did die though? I think it tried to spread out here and got picked off immediately. Be my guess. Infestors popping, lurker den is on the way. And this is turning into a bit of a more standard opening here. The three reaper opening was definitely something. Dark is, you know, the the usefulness of these roaches and these ravagers is pretty much coming to an end here. I'd be really shocked if this turned into a a win with Dark using Roach Ravager, right? At this stage of the game, where I mean, it's almost two two here for the Marines and the Marauders. Look at this! Look at this! Fungal go, bam! Fungal gets it. You can't get picked up. The Corrosive Biles are way more effective there. That was nice. Infestor pays for it with her life. Yes. Oh, drops in. This is a big four medevac drop in the main base, though. Lings, Queens on the defense. Nice fungal again, though. Oh, Corrosive Biles killing a couple Lings there. That's not good. More beautiful fungals with the Biles raining down from the heavens. And GG Dark. Gets the win. Woof. Making it happen in game one of our best of three. That was a fantastic win for him. Like I said, you're going to kind of lose your effectiveness there. <laughs> the effectiveness of the Roach Ravager and Infester. Wow. That was some great stuff from Dark in an 11-minute game for game number one. Let's see what the army supply was before that battle. 130 to 99. Okay. And the infester got a fungal off before dying. And losing all of his tanks. And 128 army to 60 supply army here. So, yeah. I do not blame Bion for tapping out one bit. That was an amazing display of a Roach Ravager infester there from Dark. Woof. So let's see, 7,500 resources lost from Dark, 7,100 lost from Beyond, a little bit too close for comfort there for the Terran player, and wow. So I thought maybe Dark would lose after he lost 21 workers to that push, but replacing workers is basically Zerg superpower. Absolutely insane, like truly, truly insane stuff there, so. Well done, and that is... A GG for game one. So let's see what's in game two has in store for us here. Maybe we're going to get a win here from Beyond Force in game three. Who knows? Hit that like button if you haven't already. Stick with it. Game Dose is here on Royal Blood. A great map for Royal Games. Bottom left, it is dark. Top right, it is Beyond. Woof. Roaches and Ravagers and Infestors. Effective until, you know, Siege Tanks and Liberators and 3-3 three, three Marines come out. The Roaches and Ravagers do lose their effectiveness, but Dark won before that was the case. So again, wall and off low ground. A little bit of pressure here planned for Beyond. The music is kind of more rhythmic and atmospheric here today, isn't it? Yes, it is. I love this. This little spamming selection over there. Extractor. Extractor, go. Thinking about it anyway. Yeah, it's another two racks opener here from Beyond. Yeah, the barrack on the low ground. The, it's a plenty pull on the low ground. Kind of tells us that's what's going to happen, right? A bit of an indication. A bit of a tell here today, if you will. So, there we go. Extractor pool. Everything is normal here from Dark. He is someone... 
that can handle getting proxied. Like, he could have proxies here. Go hatch first and win the game anyway. He's insane that way. He and Rogue kind of have that power. But yeah, we got a Reaper name ready to go. If you want me to use your Reaper name in a cast, just put it in a comment on any video. Put Reaper name, give me the name. You could have a backstory, you could have no backstory. That's fine. We'll use it in a cast in the future. Might not be immediately, might not be for a few weeks, or even sometimes it's months before I get to it, but I do use every Reaper name anyone ever gives me. So this Reaper name was submitted by Waldo, a subscriber of mine. He's having fun with this. Uh, nope, sorry, this one is Daniel. Waldo was the last one. This is Daniel, Jesse Charles McLean, also known as Harrison. Tired of his brother Daniel's antics by not using his real name, he decided to take matters into his own hands. Donning an abandoned Reaper suit, he set forth to exact vengeance on any who would follow his brother's example. All the while insisting his name is Jesse and not Harrison Ford. He now makes his point by using his twin DL-44 blaster pistols as his foes. On his foes, rather, not as his foes. Interesting. So Harrison Ford is Harrison Ford's stage name, I guess is what we're learning here today. <laughs> that was the play. Yeah, man, it's the old three Reaper opening shenanigans here. Mm, you know, I don't think this should really cause much problem for Dark. He's just a little bit, uh, a little bit too on the nose, a little bit too good with the Overlord spread and the vision, and keeping his eye on the minimap and knowing where the Reapers are at all time for this to really be a problem for him. Yeah, Kitty A charges are annoying. This creep spread being delayed. Annoying stuff too. Ling's ready to go, and just buying time. This tumor going down is really big for Dark, and he does. It's late because the Reapers made it so, but it does go down, and that's a big deal. More creep spread, more vision, more queen mobility out here against this is nice. Now, Stim's on the way from Byung. He is going, ooh, four racks opening. Oh, boy. Okay, this is extra, extra super aggressive with a side of aggression here. Let's see if Dark saturates that third base again, or if he's maybe ready for more shenanigans here from Beyond. But yeah, thanks for the Reaper name, Daniel. I appreciate it. And thanks for being a sub. Yeah, Queens reposition themselves thanks to the newfound creep spread, allowing them to get over here more quickly. You know, always nice stuff. Let's see, what's going on? Uh, oh, by the time this posts, I'll have seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm going to see that on the Saturday before this posts. So, yep. Now, here's my thing about Guardians. I kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I really hate the ending of the movie, though. When the bad guy is convinced to stop his... The attainment of the goal he's been working towards the entire film because Star-Lord is dancing. I, I can't get past it. Like, so what? The human's doing something dumb. Accomplish your goal, dummy. So that's how they win there. And Guardian of the Galaxy 2 was alright. I don't know if I liked the whole... I didn't like the storyline as much in that one. So I don't know. We'll see three. And here we go! Marines, Reapers in here too. Providing some DPS. Especially against these Lings. They're going to be useful. Oh, nice pick off on a Queen there. But too many Queens remain alive. Not enough went down. And Beyond's got to back it out. So I was having a discussion with Somicron on the podcast that we do every week together, the Falcon Paladin Hour. Check it out, youtube.com slash at Somicron. I'll put a link to it in the description. But we do it every week. We talk about this stuff. We talk about uh, StarCraft II, GSL, ESL. We talk about movies and TV shows and books and stuff. Nerdy things in general. Pretty fun time. It's an hour. It's once a week. But I realized my favorite interaction, my favorite on-screen appearance of the Guardians in the MCU was... Uh, when they were paired up with Thor in Infinity War. Like, it was like seven minutes of screen time that they spent together, but I really, really enjoyed the time they spent together. So, I don't know. I don't know if they, like, need to add Thor to the group permanently, and then I'll be a big Guardians fan, but I don't know. This might actually be the last Guardians movie for a very, very long time. If James Gunn's intentions are clear. Look at that. Die, Overlord! You scouted! And you spoiled my attack. You let Dark be ready for that, you big jerk. And yes, that is true. Overlord did his job. 
Third base from beyond, turning into an orbital inside the main here. We got Starport. We got Factory. Fourth base from Dark coming in. You you shut down that first attack by a Terran. You're feeling pretty okay about yourself. Getting a fourth base is not something you're worried about. More roaches. Absolutely crazy stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of summer movie season coming up, though, isn't it? Oppenheimer's coming. Barbie's coming. Uh, there's a Transformers film coming. I only watched the first Transformers film. I watched it in theaters when it opened on a blazing July summer day. It was glorious to get inside the theater, eat some popcorn, drink some soda, enjoy myself away from the heat. And you know, it was just my eight year old self who loves Optimus Prime and loves the Transformers, had a pretty good time with it. And then every succeeding movie just got worse and dumber, it seemed like. So I just have not watched one since and I'm not gonna watch this one either. Just really too bad, huh? All right, here we go. Drop from beyond. Drops are, as we all know, and CBTs can be really game-changing. So Queen's getting some good early shots off on the Metavax, weakening them. Not quite able to kill them because that is the nature of Metavax. Find some time. Beyond. Ooh, spawning pool snipe would be interesting. Dude, denying speed would be massive, but he turns his targets instead to the Queen's. Oh, loses one of his medevacs. Not the super full one, but one that had a few dudes in it nevertheless. I like to give you the death sound of the marines and marauders inside the medevacs when they die. Because, yeah, I mean, imagine being inside a tin box flying around and then, blah, it explodes and you're dead. Tough way to go. No, just hanging out over here. Unless you're going to make a spire, which you haven't. And you didn't do in the first game either. Good luck shutting that down. Ah, rocks finally go down. Uh, muy excelente. Excelente. More Ravagers coming in. Man, Dark really believes in the power of Roach Ravager today, which again means this game is probably... Like, he's... Uh, he's got to transition into something else unless the game ends in the next about three minutes is how I feel about it. Two twos on the way for the Marines. It's a lot of Marine Marauder, man. Corrosive Bile is good at zoning. Siege tanks in the mix here, too. They are vulnerable targets to Corrosive Bile, though. Yeah, you try to get out of there? No. No, you are not. This Medivac on the left side trying to get something done. Handful of Roaches shutting that down as well. But Dark's maxed out, and he's like, okay. When you're maxed out, it's time to go. You really cannot just allow your opponent the opportunity to catch up to you. Ling's just eating the initial tank fire there. That was pretty good stuff. Cross of Biles and Byun's chasing. Oh, he wins this right side pretty effectively. Dark winning the left side, though. And if it gets too bad, you can always pick up or, you know, just walk away casually. That totally works, too. A hive coming in. More pathogen glands. Dude, is the power of Infester on display here today. Are we going to see some killer Infester stuff again from Dark? That'd be interesting. What? Uh, Ling run by, jumping on a large group of marines, couple tanks here. Tanks dying is always a win. Ooh, Roach is getting in here too. Okay, that's going to be a massive win for Dark, but the reinforcements are showing up. A couple less EVs die in the mix here as well. And the Roaches have to retreat because they are horribly outnumbered. Engagement here. Throws a vial, taking down a siege tank. Another tank avenging his buddy by killing a couple of these Roaches. The blood splatter is insane. Dark getting a fourth base up this right side here too. Burrow getting researched. I guess if you're going to make infestors, Burrow is going to be pretty high on your priority list compared to other strategies you may be doing. 
If it's Lingbane, you know, Lingbane Hydra, we don't really see Burrow research all that much. But if you're making Infestors, sure. Why not? Cross the Biles keeping the Marines away, but Dark decides this is not a safe place to expand. It's time to get out. Dropping the main. Dude, he never goes after tech, does he? He's going after the more guaranteed damage, which are things like drones and queens. And I totally understand that. There's this roach group wandering around up here, but there's a marauder out now. That's pretty scary stuff. Extractor got sniped. That counts as something, I guess. But just definitely more part of the... <laughs> More part of the guaranteed damage set up there. A Lurker Den on the way from Dark. Oh, Cross the Biles wipe out two of the Siege Tanks there. Tank down is a lot today. Eight tanks have died. Bungle! First Bungle of this game. Catching a large group. Yeah, why don't we see more Bungle, I guess, is the question that I have to ask in general. Especially early like this. Like before ghosts come out, you know? Oh my gosh, another tank is going to die. This is not good. This is really bad from Beyond. He is consistently losing tanks today. He only has four of them at the moment. I mean, those roaches all paid for it with their lives because because of Shell is an amazing upgrade. Dark trying to expand over on this left side. Beyond has expanded to a fourth base on this right side. And like I said, Viper's coming in. The ability to tech into something else here by Dark is going to be very, very important. And it is. And Stutter stepping in here. Cross of Biles. Where are the Vipers? Where is the Fungal on this group? A Fungal? Maybe not enough to... Maybe not enough to save the day, but not enough to win the day, but maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, we're going into Lurkers now. Like I said, around 13 minutes is when you start really being convinced your Roach Ravager army is going to be enough to win this thing. So, moving into Lurkers. Maybe getting a Baneling Nest would be good here, too. Or more of a Lurker, Ravager, Hydra, Infester play, potentially. Another drop in the main here from beyond. Well, marching down the right side and trying to distract. Nice fungal catching a small group there. And enough roaches and ravagers in the main. God. Another medevac. Oh, that medevac is just holding position. No, beyond. Two focusing on this attack where he gets fungled again. There's roaches killing his SCVs up here. That's not good. SCVs, Ron. Beyond seems to be pulled in a little bit too many directions at once here. Oh, man. Abducting the tanks into Lurker Spines and into Corrosive Bile. Super sick stuff. It's a 139 to 83 total supply, or overall army supply, rather, in favor of Dark here. Keeping this hatch alive would be massive. More tanks down. Wings joining the party. Oh, yeah. This is not looking good from Beyond. And, yep, I think that might be it. GG! Dark! Two O's Beyond. Wow. So stick around. I'll tack another game to the end of this for anti-spoiler purposes. I'll find another Beyond Dark game for you. But man, that was amazing play from Dark. That's some of the best stuff I've seen from him in a while. I mean, look, he's one of the best players on planet Earth. So, <laughs> so who am I to be like, man, Dark, you've been playing like garbage recently. But he's kind of been struggling a bit. In certain ways. I mean, he's currently ranked number seven in the world on a Ligulac, and Bionna's ranked number five. So that's technically an upset. <laughs> technically an upset, right? <laughs> anyway, good. Like, truly, truly impressive stuff there from our dude Dark 2 Owing Beyond, who's playing extremely well right now, as evidenced by that Al Ligulac ranking and getting the 2 0 in this best of three. Nice, beautiful fungals. Roaches, Ravagers, Lurkers added into the mix here at the end there just to put the finishing touches on it. And gorgeous. 18,000 resources lost for Beyond and 16 for Dark. Killing tanks was key, as I mentioned earlier. 16 tanks died. And none. Every tank in the game died here today. Seven medevacs went down, which a little bit careless there from Beyond on a couple of those for sure. But nevertheless, hurts immensely. Hydralisk Den, Lurker Den. Allowed some lurkers to be produced. All four of them died. One stayed alive till the end of the game. And no adrenal today. He was going to try to do this thing with the non-adrenal lings, and it worked out. It worked out is what it did. So, 
GG, that was truly, truly fantastic stuff there, and that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be a TBZ featuring Serral and Bion here on 2000 Atmospheres. Bottom left, it is Bion. And in top right, we got Serral. Serral got knocked out of Dreamhack last chance in the group stages. He lost to DRG twice in a best of three series. Two best of three series. DRG came out ahead both times. And I don't know. Kind of feel like maybe Serral just wanted to get out of Dreamhack last chance to avoid showing uh, the builds that he's using for Katowice. He doesn't really need to go far. Well, doesn't need to do anything in Dreamhack last chance to, to uh, qualify for Katowice. So, hmm, maybe some metagaming on, going on. But DRG, if he won fair and square, then ah. Holy smokes, DRG is maybe on his way back? We'll have to see. ZBZ is such a coin flick matchup. Coin flip matchup, not coin flick matchup. Grief. Come on, English, we can do this. Meanwhile, Serral's pool firsting, by the way. Did he just 12 pool this thing? I think he did. Either way, it was a fast pool. Are we going to SCV scout? Byun. Friend of all Terrans everywhere. You need to SCV. Oh, he's skipping the SCV scout. Oh, this is brutal. This is brutal for Sir Bion, who, again, was a monster back in 2012, 2013. I remember watching games with him and just being like, he is unstoppable. Widow Mines are too good. Zerg has no answer. Anyway, he's not going Reaper either. Bion has been skipping Reaper more often than not. And, oh, this is so problematic. This is such a problem for Bion. He doesn't have anything. He has no units but SCVs right now. Uh, he's going to start making some Marines in about three seconds, but they have to produce. These Lings are taking an, a path they don't really need to take, but, you know, better safe than sorry here from Serral. Crikey. All right, so this command center is in trouble. Lings are going to show up. There's Marines being produced. They're almost done. But unupgraded Marines versus Lings do not fare super well in small numbers like this. So yeah, so the Lings come in, and they're like, huh, let's see what's up here. Oh, there's Marines. We can chase those suckers down. We're going to kill this SCV. We're going to force SCVs off the line here to actually kill these dudes. Excellent. Very good. And this is going as well for Serral as you could expect, honestly. He's running around, gets a full scout with these Lings. He sees no second gas. He sees... The three racks opening, and he's like, okay, so I'm expecting a ton of Marines early. I delayed the second base for Bjorn. This is great. I'm doing totally fine. I'm getting speed, pulling all workers about one off of the gas. I love that a lot. Maybe getting a third now or so, about three minutes from Serral. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. And he sees. It's like, okay, so there are three racks. Like, there's very little things that we can do here other than a ton of Marines. Like, maybe some Marauders, I guess. But we're not going to have to deal with Hellions or Liberators or, I mean, Siege Tanks or Widow Mines. This is just straight up Marines pushing across the map trying to kill Serral now. And it, it is in the hands of Bjorn, who is an absolute boss. And who is abjectly terrifying. <laughs> so we'll see how we can do with this, y'all. Third base? I, I know... The queens are ready to go. Two queens can handle a decent number of marines like this. I wouldn't worry about it. If I was Serral, marines are going to take a little bit of HP off of this hatch. He has to spread the creep out, though. Nah, the queens can defend. That's the whole point of them being slow, is they can defend. Uh, slowlings trying to Oh my gosh, a queen dies really easily. Dude, I thought two queens and a handful of slowlings could handle this, but... Mm, it's dicey. It's dicey. Touch and go here. Creep spread. Pushing further out this way. He needs to send it now if he can. Getting creep to the other side of this hatch would be nice. And actually, the Bion does head home. Because he's got... Actually, he knows there's lings over here. And surprise attack! Speedlings! Nom 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 nom. 
Gonna eat all of these Marines mm, for breakfast. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marines. All right, that was good. That was good. That did force Serral to make a lot more lings than he wanted to, so he's only... Well, actually, he's at 35 workers. He's doing okay. Serral's one of those zergs where it's like, oh, he had to make 40 lings early. His economy is going to be terrible, but it's like, you know what? Nope, it's fine. The economy is doing great. Combat shield coming in for Bjorn just now finishing up. Beautiful stuff. Thank you for the Game Heart interface add-on for that. Quick plug while well, it's a little bit slow here. If you do want to watch me cast live StarCraft II action in games, there's no chance you've seen before because they're live. You gotta check out AfricaTV.com slash games. I cast out there with him as part of the Africa World Invitational thing every couple weeks. We get uh, four different players to show up. We do two semifinals and a finals. And it's a ton of fun and it's great. If you want to see the VODs for those, you can check them out at uh, YouTube dot com slash laughing games i guess i'll put a link to those in the description and you can see me and him casting together casting great players like Bjorn, right like stats before he left i mean we got dong regu we get rogue we get classic we get hero i mean cure all sorts of elite korean and foreigner players here mostly koreans apparently it's been hard to convince uh foreigners to come play which is intriguing but anyway Back to the game at hand here. If I forget to put those links in, let me know. Let me know in a comment. I read every comment anyone ever makes on any of these videos. So uh, leave a comment and I will see it, guaranteed. Baneling Nest coming up here from Serral. Marines, once again. Composition here is 29 Marines and 2 Siege Tanks, man. I guess he also does have a single medevac. These, this is where things can get dicey for a Zerg player. Because he's trying to drone up. He's trying to tech up. He's trying to do a million different things, right? And at seven minutes, there's suddenly a marine, tank, widow mine, medevac, kind of an army right at his front doorstep. And you just have to make enough units to hold it, but not over make units. So you're slowing everything else down. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's slow banes, queens, and lings that have to deal with this. Tank setting up behind the rocks. So that it's harder to jump right on top of them with these zerglings. Centrifugal Hooks is actually not even on the way. So Slow Banelings it's going to be for some time here. Lair is done. Excellent. Très très bien. And Creep Spread doing very good here from Serral too. So I'm kind of surprised Bion didn't go for that. Again, this is... Man, this is honestly one of the times that it's very scary for a Zerg player. And Bion just kind of looked at it. And maybe it was a feint. Maybe he just forced out a ton of units for Serral that Serral did not want to make. And he's making more lings and everything. Is it 54 workers? Like I said, Centrifugal Hooks was delayed. Which is going to make it harder for him to be aggressive. Serral's fourth base is now coming up here. Third command center completing for Beyond back home. He's making uh, just so many barracks. Holy cow. So many barracks here today. It's going to come down to Baneling hits, man. It just is. Gonna need some amazing Baneling connections on these Marines. We don't have time to get Infestors out or Vipers or Abducts on those tanks or anything like that. Liberators are coming in here too. It's Ling, Bane, Queen all the way. Oh, Serral's fourth base is gonna die to these Siege Tanks. And attacking on the right side here too. Beyond, oh, I love this from him. He gets the fourth base. These guys can be picked up at leisure. Very nicely done by Bion. That kind of rhymes, I guess. It certainly does. Man, can Bion do this? It is a very marine-heavy composition. I guess he's making more and more liberators, though. His third base lands nakedly, but I mean, if you're keeping the pressure up on the Zerg, maybe not well enough. We got a lot of lings and banes here. Oh, I love this setup here. Tanks firing on these queens. Liberator draining a lot of energy off these queens here. Yeah, they're alive. None of them die, but the energy levels are drained quite heavily in that situation. Siege tanks. High ground position, covering this third base. Love that. Very smart. Here on 2000 Atmospheres, Terran players put tanks here. You're not going to regret it, y'all. So look at that. I guess that was a fifth base, right? Serral's... Yeah. 
So this group gets avenged. Oh, 12 kills and 8 kills. The tanks do not get picked up. But man, they're doing a ton of damage before they die. 21 kills on that tank before it goes down. And bam, a hatch, third hatch does go down. It was previously bruised and injured. Serral needs to go. And he is. He's going for it. He bailing busts the front. Goes after the SCV line. SCVs are not even getting pulled. He's worried about that. The Marines over there. Eight SCVs go down. Pretty good pull, actually, in the end. Not too shabby. Lings are on the mineral line. And sure, shooting them with your tank kills the Lings, but also kills your SCVs. And 24 SCVs die. Liberators causing all sorts of problems. On the other side here, sure, 26 SCVs died. But Liberators is wreaking havoc over here, too. Third base by Beyond might need to get picked up, but no. These Marines are ready to go. They got the 1-1 one, one upgrades. They're working on 2-2. Two, two. This is incredibly chaotic. TVZ for sure. This is a good one. This is a really, really good one. I'm liking it. From both of these players here. Byun is holding strong against Serral. The monster, Juna. The best player ever to come out of Finland for StarCraft, without a doubt. The first foreigner to ever win a world championship. The first foreigner to take it to the Koreans in a way that nobody really necessarily saw coming. That year of Serral was a good one, man. And has he repeated it? No. But I think that's mostly because other Europeans have seen him and been inspired by him. And they're his roadblocks. More than anything else, he got knocked out by Raynor in more premier tournaments than anybody else, I think, over the last couple of years. That kid's a monster. 2-2 Two -two coming in for Serral for his Lings and his Banelings and his Ultralisks, if those O's ever end up happening. Just clear and creep, man. Just, you know, and then the Lings show up and you pick up and everybody gets out but one dude. Serral's replanting his hatcheries as they're dying, with the exception of this third base unloaded. A bit of a danger zone there and loses a ton of stuff for sure. Yeah, man, this Ling Bane stuff, even off creep, feeling pretty good about it. That's a lot of Banelings. Like, look, if your opponent's going for... Ooh, nice tank splash, though. 20 kills, Siege tank. Ooh. 8 kills and 9 kills on those two. They are racking up them kills. Racking up them kills. Oh, this is good. Why is he transferring his... Doesn't he want the gas in these bases? What's he doing? Maybe he's more heavy on mineral needs right now. He's producing a ton of drones, though. Ling's going to try to knock down these rocks. They can get about a almost a 360 surround on this thing, like a 270 or something. It is 161 to 171 supply. Income is down in Byung's favor at the moment. He's just making sure this creep spread doesn't go crazy on him. I like it. He's done a great job clearing creep today. He's killed a total of 19 creep tumors in the first 12 minutes, which is just great. Unloads in a position that's really hard for Lings to deal with. And sh oh, actually, you know what? The Lings are doing fine. Surprisingly doing very well. I mean, that was a Baneling attack, right? Where did they even... Oh, just a Ling, little Ling run by here. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. That was some friendly fire tank splash for sure on those SCVs. I mean, of the 25 SCVs that have died today, I think half of those are due to tank fire friendly splash. Another attack up this way. And Sarah's like, look, if you're just going to make Marines, they're going to make Lings and Banelings and Queens all day long. And then get into Ultralisks, and then you're going to die. That said, pretty happy to continue making these Lings for now. Not interested in taking up crazy fast. Doesn't even have a hive yet. It is 2-2 upgrades for Bion. He's got his 3-3 on the way here, too. Is that another hatch going to go down? Yeah, man. Serral's going to let this thing die. That, mm. As we always say, the more hatcheries you kill in a TVZ, the better off you are. And I guess Protoss is the same thing. Pick him up. This is the problem with going Lingbane Queen is that pickups are very effective. I don't know. Third base is back for Serral. He's replanted that one. He's got a new fifth base along uh, down this right side at about the 9 o'clock position. Byung's only on three bases, right? So if Byung could maybe, I don't know, upgrade to a fourth base, that'd be great for him. The vision that Serral has, though, of potential fourth base locations is just perfect. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, 
Ah, uh, Baneling's off creep. Doesn't matter. Enough to crush that. Beyond maybe trying to take down this. This is an insanely good ZVT. Beyond, you absolute madman. He's losing so much stuff to the little Ling run buys. That hatch is getting transfused to try to keep it alive. But no, it's not enough. The Marine with plus two attack and stim. The support of Medivax here. The hatch goes down. Serral just dutifully moves his drones down to this 9 o'clock base we were talking about just a second earlier. So 3-3 finishing off for Bion is going to be a big deal. He really, really needs a fourth, man. There's that infantry weapons level 3 coming in 10 seconds away. I don't think that... I don't think that Bion knows. This is... I mean, we're at 13, 15, 16 minutes. And Serral has not made anything but Lings and Banes and Queens thus far. And it's, it's a very heavy Marine comp, obviously, with Liberators. Liberators are actually pretty bad against Lings. Yeah, they one-shot them, but their attack speed is slow. So if you try to attack, like, you're trying to kill a ton of Lings with a Liberator, you're just not going to be able to in time before all of your stuff is dead. Ah, surprise reinforcements. Nope. The surround is real. Serral's like, I love Ling Bane Queen. You're not making any Widow Mines at all. This is great. My Lings and Banes are way more effective than they otherwise should be. Seriously, incorporating Widow Mines into this would be amazing, but it is. We are not changing the story here. Bjorn lifts off his main to make a fourth base. That's what the plan is here today. Man, bottom right base coming in from Serral. He's trying to sneak that one in, I think. And now maybe he has some time to tech up. He's getting Hydralisk then. Probably going to be for Lurkers if I had to guess what we're doing here, but it... I don't know. The income's heavily favoring Serral. The resources lost here. Serral's lost a bunch more. 5,000 resources more, but he's got so many more bases. And he's got 57 workers. And sure, he's lost 11 drones today, but 32 SEVs have died. 12 o'clock base for Serral's going to die for the second time today. <laughs> another scan, right? And by that, I mean not another scan. We're just going to wander under creep and get obliterated. What the heck is this? Beyond this move commanded into a Baneling sideline. Okay. All right. That is not good at all. Uh, yeah. So we're actually going for Hydralisk upgrade. So Hydraling Bane may be here. Not necessarily Lurkers at all. I mean, obviously the option is still there, but Hydraling Bane against this seems pretty good. He does need some anti-air to deal with the Liberators and the Medivacs and stuff. He's killed exactly zero or one Medivac today, which isn't great. And just again, rolling in. So this third base, friendly fire tank splash, that's a 60 kill siege tank. But so many of those kills are also SCVs. It's not ideal. And Bion really wants to take down this nine o'clock. There's a million queens here though. Not quite enough siege tanks to really wreck that at all. Oh, Ling's getting into Bion's fourth because it's not a planetary because he lifted the orbital in from his main. Oh, this is insane stuff here. So the Lings don't have Adrenal because there's not a Hive. So I can't yell at Serral for not having Adrenal Glands. So everyone who's tired of hearing me say that is pretty happy. Serral retaking the 12 o'clock. He's taking another base up at the 11 o'clock position. I just don't know about this. serral has got a massive advantage here in overall supply. Coming from all directions. And Dion just cannot handle the sheer number of Lings and Banes here. This is what happens when you don't make Widow Mines, everybody watching, right? It doesn't happen. It, you just It's hard to deal with Lings and Banes on this magnitude, even off creep, if you don't have any Widow Mines to deal with the, the huge amounts of splash damage and, like, one-shot ginormous groups of Banelings, right? Third base under Siege again. Although there's a Bunker and a Liberator, and the Siege tank now has 71 kills. That's pretty good stuff. Ah, Marie, they get the 9 o'clock, but Serral's like, I'm cool with it. Because I'm expanding up this way, too. Liberator shuts down the 12 o'clock, though. That's pretty good stuff. This is an insane ZVT. Both players have lost so much already. 27,000 and 20,000 in the first 18 minutes is a big, big number. Liberator says, no, you're not mining here either. I'm going to kill your larva, which is actually super, super good to kill. You can kill larva easily with Liberators. You should do it. Honestly, like, a bunker down here would be amazing for Bion. But he's accepting the losses. He's killed 600 Zerglings already. Serral is not getting a hive today. I feel like he's styling, right? He's trying to make a point here against Bion. Will it backfire? 
will it bite him in the butt if he tries to be like, I don't need a hive, I don't need 3-3 for my lings, and my bane lings, I don't need adrenal glands either. Let's just make it obvious I'm not going for adrenal. And he just evacuates here. Maybe he saturates that bottom right. I don't know. Oh, this third base dying. This is what I'm talking about. One Liberator cannot save all of your SCVs and mules at a base. Beyond going to kill a ton of hatcheries. He's already killed four. This is going to be a fifth one. But he's just not doing good enough job defending his own stuff. This being a planetary would be so much better. And I don't know, taking down both of these bases simultaneously would be pretty awesome, I think. And the third base for Byun. 19 SCVs have died just now. A total of 61 have gone down here. Uh, once again, Liberators can't do much. Siege, okay, Siege Tank Fire is a splash damage, but it doesn't one-shot these Banelings like a Widow Mine would. Byun is old-schooling it, man. Actually, old-school would be Widow Mines. So I don't know what he's doing either. He's like, I can beat Serral without Widow Mines. And Serral's like, I can beat Byun without Adrenal Glands. And without 3-3 three, three upgrades for my Lings and my Banelings. And it's like, are you sure? I mean, look at the number. Six hatcheries have died today. Cease. Cease, hatchery. Trying to set up that surround again. I see you back here. He's gonna try to surround this Terran army as well as he can. Coming from that backside. Ah. Beyond watching his back that time. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bailing's going down. Bailing's a really nice split. Six splits. The right side not going super well, but trying to split again against a huge number of Banes and actually shoving this back with the Liberator support here. This is insane for Bion. It's 112 to 105 supply at 21 minutes. The devs have been intense here. An unsupported group of Marines dies after getting 10 drone kills, which is perfection. Banelings getting some connections there. Liberator setting up just to make it harder for Lings to do much of anything in this situation. Serral's making 20 Zerglings. They're almost panic Lings here. Dude, is Bion gonna win? He does, he wins it, Bion! Are you kidding me? Byun wins it in 21 minutes and a very weird TVZ. Extremely, extremely strange TVZ wherein not a Widow Mine was made and there was no hive from Serral in 21 minutes. It's almost like these guys sat down and said, okay, so we're going to have some weird constraints on this game. And Serral's like, all right, I won't get hive. How about that? So I'm not going to get lurkers because I can't get upgrades for them. I'm not going to get Adrenal. My Lings and Banes will not be as good as they can be. And Bane's like, all right, cool. So on my end, I'll handicap myself by not getting a Planetary Fortress at any of my bases, <laughs> which he didn't, and by not making any Widow Mines whatsoever. It's going to be Marines. It's going to be Liberators. It's going to be Medivacs. That's it, man. I guess some Siege Tanks, too. And Cyril's like, done. You got it. And this is the result. We end up losing 700 Zerglings. Six, hatch six hatcheries died. 61 SCVs and 30 drones. Just a bloodbath on both sides here. Serral ends up losing 37,000 resources to Beyond's 26,000. And just... Mm. Oh, so good. Just such a good ZVT. And Beyond takes down Serral, the monster that every Terran player hates playing against. I think every Terran player hates playing against Serral. I really do. Man, alive. Whew. That was a good one for your Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed that. Because that was crazy. And that is not a ZVT you're going to see again anytime soon. It just Widow Mines are such a staple of this. And Hive Tech is such a staple of this. You guys have played against each other a lot, I guess. Alright, so <laughs> that is going to be it for me today, though. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.